Now, before we say anything else, we have to start with the Berg. The Berg, my hometown. The Berg, your hometown. Pittsburgh, PA. That's right. right. Because uh, I I was laughing when I was getting ready for this podcast because I remember I was trying to set up a Zoom call with you on a project we're working on. And uh, you said, no, I can't do it then. The Steelers are playing. <laughs> That's right. And I went, man, this is a hardcore Steelers fan. <laughs> That's right. My blood runs black and gold, and I am forged by the fires of the Monongahela River in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about growing up there. Okay. Um, yeah. I grew up in a funeral home. Most people, well, a lot of people know that. because I didn't know that. Really? No. Well, I did. I grew up in a funeral home. My family uh, business, my dad was a... Uh, a young funeral director when he and my mother married, and they lived with a, a funeral director that he was had been apprenticing with for a while. And when he got his own uh, own business, set up his own business in Homestead, Pennsylvania, um, she moved my mother and the four of us there. And then I think my younger youngest sister was born. In Homestead. I think okay. the rest of us were born in McKeesport. And so, yeah, so my dad established his business in Homestead, one of the very few black funeral homes um, in the Pittsburgh area, and built his business from there. And, you know, we grew up above the funeral home. I like to call it... Um, Kind of like six feet under, but black. <laughs> wow. Less less neuroses and, uh-huh. and a little more fun. Um, but yes, and then when we were all in school, my father encouraged my mother to go to uh, PIMS, Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science, and get her certification to be a embalmer and funeral director, and she did. Okay. And so they ran the business together for many, many years. That is that is wild. My my grandfather and great grandfather had a burial vault company. Oh, interesting. Yes, yes. So the concrete burial vaults that go over the cat. So I know when it I well. was five and six years old, my grandfather would take me with my lunch and we would go and bury people, and that was my <laughs> my <grandfather. laughs> Okay, so see, we got we that. Do have, we have that in common. Dead people. <laughs> dead people. We see dead people. So you're growing up above a a funeral home. Mm-hmm. When did you? get the bug and go, I think I want to act, sing, dance, direct. Did that happen early? Did it happen later? Well, it happened early in that since I was, you know, three, I love to sing and dance and I love to pe- for people to watch me do it. Okay. <laughs> So were you in front of the Ed Sullivan show doing... <laughs> Always. <laughs> right. And, you know, Saturday mornings watching Soul Train, doing our Soul Train dances. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, so since I was a kid, and then uh, I remember, you know, I think I was about five when I had my first tap class. Right. And I still remember the first eight bars of that routine to this day. It's crazy. Um, and uh, But uh, at the same time, I, I loved school, and I loved um, I loved learning. And I was very much a science and math kid, you know, I excelled. And I was a straight-A student. But at the same time, I loved doing creative things. And I was an athlete, too. I was captain of the basketball team, captain of the volleyball team in high school. I did plays with the school. I sang in the choir at church. I sang in my school choir. Um... I was a cheerleader. Uh, my mother was like, you know, you overachiever. You're doing too much. You're going to make yourself sick. And I would, and I'd be laid up. And she's like, ah, I told you, you know, and then I'd get healthy. And then I'd back at it. So um, I've been a multitasker all my life. So it's no surprise that in later years here in New York, I was doing multiple things at the same time, a soap opera, a Law & Order, and a Broadway show simultaneously. So that's just how I came out. That's that's okay. how I came out, and I, I I think a lot of people don't realize that the connection between uh, the discipline of athletics, sports, and acting it's so similar. It all is similar, and that's why I'm a huge advocate for arts and schools. You know, I had a brilliant public school education where I was exposed to everything: music, art, dance, singing, and sports, and all of those things. You know, require a discipline that absolutely is applicable not just to the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but also, you know, skill building for later in life. Right. You know, that kind of discipline. And also, I always say music is math. So, you know, it's going to, it's going to, so I'm a big advocate. And when they are always slashing 
budgets and the first thing to go are the arts or the athletics, you know, I I cry from my soul, you know, no, and do whatever I can to help support where I can, you know. To agree with you 100%. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you the most important question of this podcast. Uh-oh. Are you ready? I'm ready. Is it pronounced Carnegie Mellon or Carnegie Mellon? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on where you're from. In Pittsburgh, it's Carnegie. <laughs> okay. So you graduated from Carnegie Mellon, <laughs> yes. and you're on the board of trustees now. So I you're, you're giving indeed. back to education because you know how vital it is. Right? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I was really honored to join the board of trustees in 2020. Um uh, it, during the pandemic. So my first board meeting was via Zoom. And I think my first in-person uh, board meeting was earlier this, G- this year. Okay. You know, so yeah. So, um, you know, I, 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 I love Carnegie Mellon University. Um, I think that it's one of, you know, well, I know that it's just one of the premier institutions, you know, in so many areas, right. uh, but particularly the drama school. Leads and um, so I'm a I'm a I'm an advocate and when I was asked to join the board of trustees I was really honored and of course I'm a trustee for the entire university but you know my heart is in the drama school absolutely and so um, I'm there to help in whatever way I can. Thank you so much for being a part of the Glimpses YouTube family. I hope you like, subscribe, and enjoy all of the clips and episodes coming your way. As you go about your day, I encourage you all to take a moment, look around, and catch a glimpse.